Out. Welcome to the advanced tutorial on using version control, which in Dote is checkpoints and auto backups. So please, if you haven't already, take a look at the basic introduction to using checkpoints and auto backups um, and before moving on to this tutorial on advanced features. Now in the basic one we told uh, how to uh, install Git, uh, which is required, uh, but there can sometimes be problems. And here we have a Dot Lego demo open and Git is installed on this machine and everything works nicely. But if we just take a look at uh, the help guide, you'll see for the uh, version control for his version control link for backup systems that uh, when you get down to um, setting up checkpoints and auto backups and you follow these steps as discussed in the um, uh, the basic uh, tutorial for version control there can be problems and there can be sometimes for some Mac users uh, some problem there could also be that you have um, need to get admin pr permission from your IT department in order to install anything and therefore you can't install it uh, or you don't have ac admin rights to your computer uh, anyway, and it's not your computer, so you can't install Git. Those are issues you have to solve yourselves and get your IT department or get admin permission to be able to use, install the software and uh, allow it to run on, on the computer. Um, but there can be this problem, uh, and if you get this sort of error, then there's uh, something you can do to try and resolve that. Um, there could be other very specialized errors, uh, something to do with Git's operation, something that we can't anticipate, and then we'll have to try and figure those out when those sorts of issues come up later uh, as Dote is released. So uh, uh, once Dote is installed, then it should run uh, in the background and you don't have to worry about it again. There may come a time in the future when you should really upgrade the Dote installation because of some sort of security issue. And that's up to you to do on your computer and just follow the same steps to uh, be able to upgrade uh, Dote, uh, uh, Git. Um, in a future release of, of Dote, there may be Git may be uh, in integrated into uh, Dote so that you don't need to worry about this. Um, but at the moment, you do have to install it separately from Dote. OK, so that's just some idea of some possible problems and uh, the lifespan of Git uh, in terms of its use for in your system. Uh, and there, if you go down to the very bottom of this page, you'll see more advanced, very advanced uh, features when we get down to you know, what is actually going on, the tracking. How can you use GitHub, for example, or a Git uh, GUI, a UI for Git, to collaborate on transcripts in a much more distributed fashion, which is possible and we have done ourselves. Uh, and then also notes on, on how uh, Git is used within Dote, especially questions of the safe directory which we use. So if you are a developer or programmer yourself and you use Git for other purposes, you need to be aware of this. So those are more advanced issues which you can check out yourself on, on the help guide. So let's go back to Dote and then see uh, what we can do with uh, peaking. So if we go to auto backups, for example, here we can see, uh, well, if I just turn that off again, you'll see what we did in the basic tutorial is we added this line here, 22. P2 arrives at hidden table. So um, we added just that one line there, and that meant that triggered an auto backup. And the auto backup, uh, for example, if I go back uh, 13 minutes ago, um, no, we go back 19 minutes ago, or 21 minutes ago, there we see it. And there you see uh, line 23 was added. Uh, this is because we have display changes. If we have this turned off, you will just see the transcript as it was at that point. And that was the, uh, um, uh, uh, line 23 here was added. P2 moves towards the covered object. Um, so that means uh, uh, this gives a record of auto backups. Uh, 21 minutes ago, this change was made. And uh, what we could do is go back to that uh, to a certain state earlier. Um, uh, go back six days ago or ten days ago. Uh, and let's just see if we click one of these. Um, I'll just find one that has a change that's logged. Uh, just clicking on multiple ones. Ah, we have to see the changes. Sorry. Let's say here this one. 
and let's say this one yeah there we see one with a change uh, and there um, oh that's just to do with the uh, go back even further than that let's go back to no I'm trying to find one with a reasonable change oh maybe we can't so uh, what we'll do is just see this one here if we wanted to restore to this auto backup we could just click this and that means we would go back to that particular state so if we click here do you want to restore continue uh, it would restore to the state it was at that point and if we do that say yes then that's now restored the transcript to that state and if we go back we'll see that is the state um, uh, it's the same state because we hadn't done anything different uh, moving towards the covered object if we look at checkpoints uh, yeah it's not no different um, if we do restore to a state that's much earlier for example let's go back to this one uh, you can see that doesn't have that comment let's restore to that continue now it's removed and if we uh, take a look we'll see it has been removed here and if we look at checkpoints you'll see we've now added a checkpoint that says restore to auto backup from this date in the past uh, which has that removed uh, if we peek at add new comment and then look at display changes we'll see there it is so we didn't have it at this point at five months ago we added it 24 minutes ago and we've restored to an earlier state in which it's not present um, so what we can also do in the uh, checkpoint mode is also restore or reset so for example if we're looking at this add new comment let's say we're peeking at that it's showing the difference let's say we actually want to go back to that so restore to this checkpoint and it will say well every change that you've made after this is going to be lost so that's this change that we made when we restored to the auto backup so you can make a new transcript and a new transcript will just branch off and uh, from this change here with all the prior changes into a new transcript and discard all after but leave this transcript with all of the changes here marked so or you can restore to this checkpoint so we're going to do that we're going to restore to this losing that auto backup restore so I say yes and there we are we've lost that we've restored to this and there it is back again and that will generate uh, changes in a moment uh, to the when the five minute period is up because these are now changes that were made compared to the last one in the auto backup so you can see these are two independent systems but they are dependent sort of working with each other because if you do a restore in one that means there are changes now in the other and that will be logged as well if you make changes uh, restore in the auto backup that means that there's also changes to the current transcript that you need to make a new checkpoint and that's done automatically for you as we saw so now we're back to where we were um, there is also another possibility which is if we uh, um, let's try it again if we go to here and let's say we go back to one of these earlier ones and we say restore to this and say yes it's going to restore to that state go to checkpoints there we are there's the restore let's say we want to go back to to this one then we could say reset to previous checkpoint now uh, if we did that we go back to the isolated overlap line so we're looking at this one we're seeing that change then if we click on this then we would actually go back to that so if we say restore to previous checkpoint we're going to lose this change that we made so let's try that let's say uh, we could see reset to new transcript and have a generate a completely new transcript from that point so we're going to have a branching and have two transcripts one with the, all the changes up to now and one with the changes only up to the point that we've chosen but let's just say we restore to this checkpoint and if we do that now we have lost that change that we added at line 23 it was and now we're back to only that point and an auto back is, backup is going to be generated shortly uh, because of the change that was made so uh, hopefully that gives you some idea you can uh, restore to an auto backup any in the past you can only do that in dope pro um, uh, or with git installed sorry but to see the see the difference between them you have to have dope pro so here shows the differences and 
there you can see uh, isolated overlap line that was this one here uh, to do with a change an error that was introduced uh, but it, otherwise you will just see this uh, which will show you the transcript as it stands which is also useful too even in dope pro because these check these will also work so I can also move and play these so you can see these are all, these uh, sync codes are active and the warnings are active so uh, it's still but if you display this then you'll see the sync codes disappear because it doesn't track sync code changes or view video queue changes it's just going to show you the difference in the text in the transcript and there we see this was the only difference that was made the only change that was made to create this new checkpoint so all i did was to delete one symbol uh well uh two symbols um to uh, create an error and if i turn this off you'll see that error was um, down here yeah so missing op uh, symbols um Oh no, it was more than that. Uh, it was, let's see, if I display, it's this isolated overlap line at line 84. So if I take off the changes and look at line 84, it's here. Yeah. So P2 runs. Uh, this is an isolated overlap line. Is it what is overlapping uh, with it? We don't know. And so uh, we need to insert those symbols. So you can see you can see the current state of the transcript at that time, the, the state at that time, and you can see the difference between what the state was before and what it was after between one checkpoint and the next checkpoint. So we're currently peaking at this one. We could peek at a, a missing speaker ID, and then that one would show us uh, here that there's, uh, something was deleted, and that's what we're peeking at, and that was the change made from the previous one to the current one. So it's, it's quite sophisticated and uh, um, they can do far more th uh, things and have uh, work on transcripts together. But you're going to need to understand how Git works and then use GitHub to do that. That's something we don't yet support in Dot. Uh, what we will support is uh, single users and then sharing of changes because what you can do is make your changes. So let's just leave checkpoint mode. And if I share this and I, I go to um, say export my transcript to a file. Uh, it says, do I want to include checkpoint history and auto backup history? So I can include this history and then uh, somebody who imports that into their project with the same uh, video data will see these changes and therefore they can, they can look at them and maybe inspect the changes that have been made. So you have a, a way of sharing sets of changes uh, um, between uh, in a small team and being able to uh, uh, maybe evaluate those and make new changes and make new uh, checkpoints. Uh, maybe you don't really want to share the auto backup history. That's just in case something goes wrong, and then you can restore if uh, you've lost something or you made some stupid changes or somebody accidentally made changes. Then you can go back, but you don't really maybe want to uh, share that. But there might be a reason why you do, so you you are able to do that. Okay, uh, that's um, uh, there is. Uh, another video about comparing auto backups and checkpoints just to go through that in more systematic detail uh, the last thing to do is look at auto backups and the retention strategy and what you see here uh, if you if you uh, click on this it will give you some idea of the uh, what a single backup and never delete backups a smart backup and an only keep backups for 30 days just giving you some idea because you can select those uh, and if I do, if I did, for example, keep only the most recent backup, I would lose all of these backups here. Only keep backups for 30 days, then I would retain all of these, given they're only 10 days ago. Uh, I never delete backups, it would keep uh, piling up. Uh, it's not a big dr um, drain on your uh, storage, because these backups are not very large on the disk. But uh, you would end up with many, 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 many backups going back. And the smart backup is what I had set on this and that means every five minutes for the past two hours uh, keep keep those backups but once you pass uh, two hours then every hour for the past 24 hours only keep one backup uh, for uh, once an hour and then prune away uh, once you get beyond a day so only every day for the past month is kept and one per month after that so uh, uh, you still get to keep 20 backups uh, regardless of, of this pruning strategy but uh, soon enough 
as you can see here uh, we only have kept um, things for 10 days uh, uh, within the month um, and before that there are no new ones uh, once, once these goes over into the next month then it will only uh, it will keep um, uh, once one per month after that so um, this is a nice uh, pruning strategy but you need to appreciate that you're going to lose content uh, uh, backups in between um, so it's going to keep uh, a backup but it won't keep all the others for that month or um, uh, once you've got over 20 backups so you've got some different retention strategies for your auto backups so that you don't uh, accumulate too many auto backups which are unnecessary okay that's enough for now on the quite sophisticated version control systems built into dot and you can take a look at uh, the um, comparing uh, uh, and resetting restoring auto backups and checkpoints to see more detail on that